Reflecting the moods of the Sydney sky by day, mirroring its glimmering lights on the water by night, the Sydney Opera House will perform its own exciting drama on the harbour. This was the concept of the architect who gave us Design 218. Two hundred years ago, trees and scrub wandered down to the water's edge. Now, there's a city. Here, close to where the first landing was made, Benelong Point pushes out into Sydney Harbour. And on this historic thrust of rock is rising a new sort of building, a concept for a home of culture. As you mount the grand ceremonial approach, you'll cross an arch of concrete, self-supported and in form and conception unique in the world. Then on up the second steps to the podium where the two auditoria are placed. Here in the main auditorium, this chasm will house the machinery which will raise and lower the stage in seven sections. In this sweep of masonry, 3,000 people will sit uncrowded. Above these tiers will soar the largest arc of the shell roof. In the smaller hall, the stage is designed to revolve before 1,200 banked seats. And from inside the massive building, with its complex machinery and masonry, the audience will have extensive views of one of the world's most beautiful harbors. The curved facades of the massive stone base take shape and indicate that the first stage in the building of the Opera House is nearing completion. Its Danish designer, Jorn Utzen, is now in Sydney to prepare the way for stage two the erection of the vaulted shells of the roof. Jorn Utzen, a man who thinks and lives only for architecture. These days, only for the architecture of the Opera House. It's from this deep absorption in all the aspects of his vocation that he has drawn his designs. This is a man who can see and enjoy the architectural merit and mechanical possibilities in the shape of a twig who can resolve from theory and calculation a creation unlike anything in the world, a creation which in many ways is like the man himself. The massive base is like Utzon's grounding in the solid world of mathematical and physical properties and the laws of stress. The splendid ceremonial approach is like the rise to knowledge and eminence of this international prize winner. And at the top, the light, graceful, tough and almost fantastic shapes of the Opera House roof symbolise the vision which has grown from the solid foundation. We listen to him as he talks to Professor Ingham Ashworth. Hello, Jorn. Many thousands of people in this country and in Sydney, I suppose in particular, have seen the results of your design in the Opera House now growing on Benelong Point. Many have seen pictures of you, but not many have had the opportunity of listening to you. And in the relatively short time we have this evening, I'd like to ask you one or two possibly leading questions, uh, but which will at least uh, enable you to say something to the people of Sydney. Perhaps a major question I could put to you, what, uh, do you, what are your sort of views and opinions or thoughts on modern architecture? What does it mean to you? <laughs> it's difficult to in a few words to explain my mm. views on that, but I, as a principle, feel that modern means to be up to date, to accept your own time, and to be proud of that your own time can produce something which in 100 years or so will be your time's expression. And mm. that's the true uh, way of being modern. Mm. Uh, the Opera House is, in many ways, very modern. It's very much up to date, and some of our methods of construction and some of our architectural details and ideas will might, might be uh, leading, in a way, into the future. So they might be more than modern. And um, that's not because we want to be modern, but that's because it's just the job, the, the, the enormous uh, problems have forced us to do new things and use every possible construction method. From what you say, then, it's really the approach to your problem, uh, perhaps, which is the modern thing, not so much the thing itself. It's, it's the way in which yes. you approach your yes. problem. Yes. Is, do I take it you, you feel that? Yes, I, I'm afraid of, of, of the word modern because... It's a foolish it, word. Uh, well, modernistic, they yeah. have it, a style, isn't it? Yeah. But, but up to date, 
and accepting your own time. Well, many people have sort of expressed views about the Opera House, even from the early days when even the assessors were talking about the shells and the sails on the harbour. What were, uh, are your feelings in the sense that what do you feel to be the basic essentials of this design that are important to you? The, the, the major importance, which, which you saw, you've just seen a movie uh, 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 from, uh, taken from a helicopter, but it might not have been necessary to go in a helicopter because you look down on the upper house from any part of the town. You see it from the bridge, from the office buildings, from a new scheme, from a new uh, rocks uh, uh, scheme, mm -hmm. and it's built, you will see it from there. And it's so exposed, so there were almost no backside. You could not conceal anything, and you even looked down on the roof, which mm -hmm. meant that you had to create something like a sculpture, which could be seen from all sides. And besides that, it sits in a harbor with buildings of a square character, and you don't want to have the name Opera House written mm -hmm. on it. You want to see this is an opera house, like you see, this is a church. Mm -hmm. So I, had, I wanted to come out from the uniform family of office blocks to stand out mm. as a personality. Well, it would seem that the assessors correctly interpreted your feelings. Yes, I would, I, that was great luck for me. Uh, well, that's interesting. What, uh, what, what else do you feel? What were your reactions, for example, when Frank Lloyd Wright uh, was very caustic and said, this is sensationalism? What were your reactions to that? Well, well I, I, I have once met Mr. Wright and told him um, and I admire him as the big architect, the most wonderful architect. Mm. And, and here he came and said that, that this was a barge sailing the, the wrong way out, of the, with, with the back out of the harbour. <laughs> but he has really never been uh, happy about anything but his own jobs, which must be wonderful. I mean, I am I'm not so happy with my own things. Uh -huh. uh, I can criticise them. But he criticised every, criticised everything in a very amusing way, and, and, and anyhow, many times it was, uh, there were good criticism in it, but I didn't take that serious. Oh, he's dead now, anyway, so you Certainly. don't envy him anyhow. Well, he might be <laughs> listening in, in some way. Yeah. Tell me, what uh, is your reason behind this great podium? A, lo a lot of people have the feeling that you've emphasised this sort of uh, pedestrian approach. Is, is, is it really as important to you as all that? Yes. Uh, on this peninsula, as you remember, there were many schemes where the architects had put buildings on mm. the peninsula. So you had to be, you had the feeling of you were walking between buildings, and sometimes you got a glimpse of the sea in between buildings. But they're just houses taken from um, any, they could, be placed, could have been placed anywhere on any block of land. But I wanted to make the whole peninsula one piece of architecture down to the water. Mm. And to get people up on a square, and I made this big, enormous staircase because I love to see people walking up and down instead of having them rushing in the same plane as you are and just taking the view away from you. It's beautiful to see them up, moving up and down. Mm. And by moving up and down in relation to the water and the shells, you will have a lot of experiences, a marvelous sort of feeling of being closer of further away from the water, and so on. The large flight of steps doesn't sort of cause you any qualms then, that no. face you when you go up this podium? No, I, I think I've been, I've been um, to temples in India, for instance, hmm. where there were only one person on, on big steps. This was beautiful. It doesn't hmm. matter. It's just a staggered podium, in a way, the steps. Hmm. Just changing the subject a little, how has this sort of work affected your life? What, what about the sort of rest of your professional career? How is this work affecting it? Well, I, 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 I very uh, soon saw that this is almost more than one man can deal with. I have very good, a wonderful staff, wonderful men working with me, and they are all very enthusiastic about this thing. But I gave up uh, getting, uh, taking other jobs in. I had to have another smaller thing. and. Um, I think it's the best for me to concentrate on this because this building has all what an architect can ask for in, when it comes to architectural problems. You have to work together with engineers. You have to create spaces for a lot of people 
in a, having a, a lot of people in the same room, you are creating corridors and promenades and small intimate rooms, and you're dealing with machinery and so on. So you can't ask for a more complicated job. But what has it done to your other your other building that you're designing? Well, it, it, in a way, of course, it has stimulated them somehow because here you can experiment with forms as you cannot in other normal buildings. Mm -hmm. I've learned a lot from this building, mm -hmm. and I'm well seeing some of it now. Give me good feelings. You think you're going to get lots more work anyhow after this? Yes, I might. I, I might not. I mean, uh, you know the story about the Swedish architect who built the town hall in Stockholm. Well, that's right. Yes, he, yeah. he, he isolated himself from the outer world and he lost his friends and possible clients. And when he was finished, he never got a job again. He died uh, in solitude or whatever you call it. Yeah. And uh, that I don't like, yeah. anyway. Oh, well, no doubt you've learned that lesson anyhow, yes. so if you won't repeat it. Yes. And how long do you think the job is going to be before you finish it? Well, another three years to go. Three years. It's going yeah. to be a ten-year project, really. Well, we did the start seven no, years ago. No, I mean, ago. from uh, the initiation of the competition, I suppose, yes, you, you yes. to really be yes. a sort of ten-year project. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, some of the big cathedrals took hundred years to build, and, and I think that it is very fast. Some of the modern buildings have a sort of a, a too speedy character over them. You can see mm -hmm. they've been rushing them up. Yes. Well, I suppose uh, men, most people don't really, I think, go and appreciate the immensity of this project. I mean, they only see portions of it just on the site at the moment and just read about it in the press. I don't think they really understand the immensity no. of this great project. It's difficult to understand it. Uh, we can put the AMP building, mm -hmm. uh, take it down and put it down somewhere and it disappears. And, and there, there's no other building I can think of, mm. of that size. Oh, well, all I can say is we're all looking forward very much to the opening day, anyhow, and being present to see this magnificent building open, Jorn. Yes, yeah, so am I. I, I think it's, it's marvelous years for, mm. for me and the other. When do you anticipate coming out here? To to permanently, stay. yes. I would imagine there'll come a moment you'll have to be yes, here. Yes, I'll be here when the, when the structure of, sta of stage two has been started. Mm. Then I'll come up and s I'll stay here. I see, next year. Yes. Oh, well, we're looking forward to it. The architect conceives the idea. The engineer formulates the hypothesis and together they translate it to a reality. The executive committee realized that a world-leading firm of consulting engineers would be required to handle a project of such magnitude. From the suggestions of the committee, Jorn Utzon chose the firm of Ove Arapen Partners from London. Mr. G.J. Zuntz, Jack Zuntz, a South African now living in London, is a partner of the firm. He's been mainly concerned in resolving the problems of the construction of the shells. He now discusses with Professor Ashworth the relationship between the architect and the engineer. Well, Harry, it's uh, really a most interesting topic to discuss with you, although there isn't really, uh, the, the, the scope is too large to really uh, deal with it in a short talk like this. But there's so much said about this collaboration these days that it might be worthwhile just talking for a few minutes about it. Mm. Um, the sad fact is, of course, that while so many engineers attempt to, to uh, collaborate closely with architects and designers, they are, in, a, in essence, a, a different breed. They, they, they have their training, their basic training, is quite divergent from the architectural training. Mm -hmm. uh, would you agree with that? I would agree with that to a point, Jack. Yes, I'm particularly interested because uh, I run a course at the university in which I lecture to the final year engineers and have done so for a number of years just to try and uh, avoid this sort of schism which tends to be created e even at early student days and that engineers and architects must of necessity at least have some understanding of each other's skills. To me this job here is the very epitome of this 
relationship to me. I mean, would, would you concur in that? Oh, yes, yes, very much so. <coughs> in, uh, uh, ideally speaking, of course, it, 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 everything should come out of one mind. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you see, we, we all recognize, I think most architects, engineers, constructors generally recognize that technology nowadays is far too complex for everything to emanate out of one brain. Mm -hmm. And we therefore have to set up teams and one of the first essentials of such a team, of course, is to, to have a very happy, healthy relationship with your co-workers. Mm -hmm. Well, Jan has set these dreamlike, fantastic problems to us. What sort of a slave master is he, anyway? <laughs> well, he, he, he's not really a slave master at all. I he, believe he, that. He, he, <laughs> he's, uh, he's the most exciting uh, architect to work with. I mean, we, 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 work, we have worked with a lot of architects throughout the world, and he's probably one of the most exciting. He, his singular devotion to this project is something we all, uh, my colleagues and I, admire, and we have really uh, trying to do all. We have uh, an enormous number of people. We, uh, recently, we took account out of, uh, we have 12 different nationalities at the moment working on this project. Mm -hmm. um, at the end of, up to the end of February, uh, we had spent 150,000 working hours. Uh, man hours? Man hours, yes, working. Yes. Good gracious, that's about a hundred years' work yes, for one man. Yes, slightly more than a hundred years' work for one man, yes. yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. I feel that I get very irritated, and I know quite a number of architects do, and I suppose the same thing applies equally to engineers. When you get statements being made that uh, either side, really, I, either profession is the sort of important mover in a project, it seems to me we've just got to leave well, behind that silly kind attitude. of thinking. Yes, I think it's a silly attitude. I think we have to each recognise the other's worth. And uh, in any particular project, the man most suitable, the architect, the engineer, or it might even be somebody else, would be the leader of the team. Mm. Broadly on this project, the architect is the leader of the team, but he's recognized that the stage one contract, the base, and also the stage two contract is purely civil engineering work. Mm. And while he's guided the basic conception, the contract administration is left in our hands. I see. And it would be fair, I suppose, to say that in essence, the very structure of this particular building is its architecture, really. Yes, yes, very much so. I think that uh, from the, the, the first idea, which was purely architectural one, mm -hmm. there's been this fantastically close collaboration where we, the colleagues and I, we've tried to, 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 to work very closely with the architect and explain to him certain basic principles, once which he didn't know before, he knew most, of course, and to, 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 to create the whole into a a viable structural scheme, and then he's used the structure to, as an expression of the architecture mm. of the whole building, of the function. What sort of qualms did you have, I mean, when you initially, when you were asked to take this job on? Well, we, we realized, of course, that this was one of the most spectacular undertakings we have uh, undertaken. We, it, is, it is certainly one of the most complicated buildings mm. uh, we've ever had to deal with. It's well, the most complicated. we haven't had a lot of time Jack, but I, I think we just had a few words about this very important relationship which we must continually press for. And what about us now walking over and joining the architect Yorn and see if you and he can demonstrate in a sort of three-dimensional way what this relationship really means yes, uh, I in, a, in a practical sense. Perhaps yes. we could go and join yes, him. Yes, let's do that. Well, Jorn, I've tried many times, as you know, to sort of demonstrate this thinking. I mean, on television and in lecture courses, and it's very wonderful, really, that we now have you, the architect, and our eminent engineer, who can talk for themselves. <laughs> so perhaps you will try and demonstrate to the viewers your thinking. Where, at what point we're at now in terms of the construction of the shell roof, in particular? Yes. Um, be happy to do that. It might be a little bit difficult to understand. Mm -hmm. I'll try my best. Mm -hmm. um, the start, this sketch, as we call it now, the competition scheme, was shown to the engineers, and they told me, now we must make a geometry which dominates the form of these shells. We must make them, get them into family, in harmony. And we worked for, let's say, two years very hard with various schemes, and um, set then our standards. By this work, we set our standards, yeah. got well, the conditions. Whenever 
Johan came to London from Copenhagen with a new standard or a new problem, he usually had to bring along a few bottles of champagne to pacify us. But he added to the thousands of man hours. <laughs> yes. Well, what about the, the first simple thing, Johan, that it, you... The this, this first thing, to get harmony in the surfaces means just to get beautiful forms, which from any angle would cut, it, to cut together in a beautiful uh, lines and curves. Mm. And the other thing was to have a sensible structure. Um, these people are having one enemy in life. It's the law of gravity. Mm. And the third thing was to be able to do it in a sensible way, to build it in a sensible way. And by sensible way, we found out that if we could do build these enormous shells of small prefab elements and just have to assemble the whole thing on the side instead of having to make form work, apply the steel work and the concrete up in the air, 180 feet above sea level. Mm. Could you demonstrate that in a simpler way, in, in terms of, say, simple planes rather than these complicated ones? Yes, I, I, I could say that if you want to make something up of ele elements, you, you can all understand easily that you can make a flat plane up of square small elements and they actually do that in uh, all the artist blocks in mm. Sydney. They have these curtain walls which yeah. are built up of small frames with glass in them. Prefabricated. Prefabricated to great precision and it's a beautiful way of making a facade of a building. Yeah. When you then, as we have here, are dealing with curved forms to, to make it easier to understand, um, I can, of this same piece of paper, make a vault. And this vault, you can see easily, Harry, you can make up of elements by cutting it up, parallel cuts, and by adding these elements together like small arches. It's almost like a loaf. Of a uh, bread, a bread yeah. yes. Cut with all the pre-cut. Yes. So the, the, the elements uh, of the plane were cut uh, in two directions of the plane, and to create elements for the, the art, the vault, you just made elements which was like cuts uh, perpendicular to a cylinder. You pre-cast yes. all these individual pieces, yes, yes, the same yes, size and yes, shape, right. and then put them together. Then and that is the kind of thing you're wall, aiming yes. at on this more complicated yes. surface. Yes. See, this cylinder is curved only in one direction. I can't curve this in two directions to, to, to visualize a thing which is curved in two directions. I can take a sphere. We spent in all directions, and we actually ended up, we were through Yes, we went ellipses. through ellipses, parabolas, and all sorts of more forms. complex forms mm. before Jorn and arrived at this. Sphere. Ended up with a sphere, and when you have a sphere, you have a top of a sphere here, you know that you can cut that up from the top, the south pole or north pole, in slices which are similar. So we thought if you could get our shells in that sphere, we could make it of units, and we actually did that. And you can see here now, I take the whole compass, the mayor shell, the biggest shell, covering the stage tower, and the entrance shell, and the two other shells, which are um, covering the auditorium. Behind, you can see all this whole group. It's only the half of it. It mm. has a symmetrical part to go with it. This group I took out of the sphere, which again meant I took it out of a form which I could make up by small, similar pieces. And Mr. Jack, would you please mm. explain yes, well, the structure? Well, you see, Jorn has shown how this comes all out of the same sphere. Yeah. Now, this is one large piece, and you might say that all these pieces could be cut out of okay. one such piece. Well, now, just to enlarge the scale a bit, if you imagine, if you can remember, or uh, you will know, but mm. viewers might not, the, the, the Longer lines of longitude on the Earth. Mm. Well, in the same way as the lines of longitude, so each element of the sphere has been separated as a unit away from the whole so that it can be pre-made, prefabricated, and then assembled together. Mm. Now, each of these elements is identical for the whole entire... Route. Coming back to the orange again. Coming back to the orange, yes. Yeah. You, you cut up each... Segment, like slice yeah. of orange. You can actually make a whole sphere of mm. this. This is just a part of it. Yes. This is any part of the yes. sphere, yes. And the difference being, if we look at uh, a member here or an element there, it's exactly the same element except that the one is longer mm. than the other. Now, here mm. you, we can see now how one element could be taken away from the whole. Now, we make, we're going to make these elements 
by precasting, they'll be in concrete, they'll be hollow, mm. and they'll be precast on the ground, probably on the site, um, in, in small pieces, pieces yes. Yeah. And these pieces, this is just to illustrate the... These are the pieces, the, the, they're, they're somewhat out of scale. Each will weigh 10 tons. And at this stage, of course, we have to try and collaborate very closely with a contractor who will play a, a most important part in the design team. This is where it differs from uh, the, a normal oh, yes, yes. contract. You see, uh, we, we can only go so far in the project now without having a contract and having decided exactly how it's going to be put together. We've made some preliminary proposals, and uh, they're shown on a, on a rough perspective sketch. Uh, there's a big crane on the sketch, mm -hmm. as you can see. This big crane is a... Uh, they're, they're none at present in Australia. It's a new piece of equipment. It's the largest commercially made tower crane in the world. There are a few in France, and I think one in Switzerland. And this crane can lift 10 tons, of, ten tons at, a, at a radius of 100 feet. Yes. And we propose lifting these elements. The sketch shows how an element is lifted up. And then they put one on top of the other. And then they're joined together. We, we, we call this joining together stressing, pre-stressing. It's like, like the bones of a human arm, they would all fall apart, but they're held together by tendons, and these similar tendons we will use for holding the precast elements mm, together. Stress together. Tight That's right, after yes. the well, that is a simplified ex explanation of how mm. we propose to, to, to deal with it. And you see the underside of this, do you, Jorn? Yes, you, 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 you From get, inside the house? You get in under it, and the inside <coughs> will have this clearly, clearly express the structure. Mm. You have the strong feeling of these ribs. They go up and make themselves into, transform themselves into triangular pipes, mm. and the outside will be shiny tiles, mm. now completely in order because of this system of elements. What color? They'll be white, mm. but there will there'll be, a, because in between these units, you'll have a joint, mm. and this joint will, will be marked by a very small line of small tiles on the edges of each element. Mm. So in a dull day, when you have no sun, you'll have the lines showing the form like Wimps spinnaker, for instance, when you see Wim in the harbour. Mm. Like the seams in yes, the sail. The, the Wim has three colours, I yeah. think, like the Norwegian flag, yeah. whereas uh, Gretel at a certain stage had no colours. But Wimps form, you saw the form clearly because of this definition by line. Mm. Actually, we said earlier on how the structure, how the architecture is partly written... To these hands are entrusted the ideal of the Opera House an ideal which points to the shape of Sydney of the future, a mature city, its maturity expressed by the desire to create a focus for the culture of the world.